Welcome. In this video, we shall be looking at epilepsy in pregnancy. Approximately 30% of those cases with epilepsy are women in their childbearing years, meaning 1 in 200 pregnant ladies complain of epilepsy. However, pregnancy does not have any consistent effect on epilepsy because some of these women may have an increased frequency of fits where others may have a decreased frequency, others may not show any difference. And the principles of epilepsy management are in such a way that while the risks to pregnancy from seizures outweigh those from the convulsant, anticonvulsant medications, then these seizures should be still be controlled with the minimum dose of the optimal drug. There are a number of pre-pregnancy counseling tips for these patients with epilepsy, which includes alteration of medication according to the seizures frequency, reduction to monotherapy when possible, a good compliance to anticonvulsants, preconception folic acid of about 5 mg daily, explanations of the risk of congenital malformations which are associated with anti-epileptic drugs, and an explanation of the risk of the current seizures. What are the real causes of seizures in pregnancy? The causes of uh, seizures in pregnancy include epilepsy itself, eclampsia or high blood pressure in pregnancy, encephalitis or meningitis, a space occupying lesion, for example a tumor in the brain, cerebrovascular accident or stroke, metabolic abnormalities, for example hypoglycemia, toxic overdose or alcohol withdrawal and cerebral malaria or toxoplasmosis. The main principle of concern that is related to epilepsy in pregnancy is an increased risk of congenital abnormalities which are caused by anticonvulsant medications. These medications are known to increase this risk two to threefold compared to the general population who are not on any anticonvulsants. There is approximately a doubling of the risk in the unexposed epileptic mothers. And the common the commonest epileptic medications include sodium valproid, carbamazepine, venetoin, and phenobarbital. The common fetal anomalies which are associated with anti-epileptic medications include neurotube defects, facial clefts, cardiac defects, and specific syndromes which include developmental delays, nail hypoplasias, growth restriction, and mid-phase abnormalities. There is also an increase in chances of epilepsy in the offspring who is delivered to an epileptic mother. And in treatment, a polytherapy usually increases the risk of anomalies by 15 to 25%. Women who are in their childbearing age and suffer from epilepsy and are on any maintenance therapy of anti-epileptics must have their treatment reviewed and a monotherapy is recommended if at all possible. So anti-epileptic drugs are known to cause teratogenicity and a folic acid 5 mg daily throughout the pregnancy period is prescribed in the view of a relative folate deficiency of many mothers on these anti-epileptic medications. So it is important to control the seizures which is usually achieved to minimize any maternal morbidity because fits can be fatal and patients must be monitored during pregnancy period to ensure that those adjustments are made appropriately. And sodium vaporate is the main cause of concern in these conditions. All patients should receive a normally ultrasound scans or assessment to exclude specific abnormalities which are associated with these anticonvulsants. These are specifically orofacial clefts, neurotube defects, and craniofacial dysmorphisms. So a vitamin K is recommended to be given from 36 weeks of pregnancy onwards to prevent any neonatal bleeding disorders. And an intraopatum management, anti-epileptic epileptic seizures may occur during labor and as such may confuse the diagnostics by confusing it with eclampsia and epileptic seizures 
should be treated in these circumstances as they would be treated in normal cases. And usually a vaginal delivery is recommended unless there is an obstetric complication that necessitates a cesarean section. Postpartum lay. A postpartum drug doses may need to be adjusted if any doses have been increased during the pregnancy period and a specific advice may be given to epileptic women about their childcare, for example not bathing the children on their own, breastfeeding can be encouraged in these women and a contraception is advised because combined or contraception pills are better not to be used with anti-epileptic medications because of interactions.